Hi everyone, I'm back and I'm here to conduct another collective reading. Um, it's been a really tough few days. I think it's been about four days now. Just hardcore emotions pouring in and I've been waking up crying which is pretty interesting because I think a week ago I was saying um, I need a really good cry. I just need to cry cry something out of my system. So not only for the past four days have I been highly emotional, but for the past two days I've woke up crying over something. And it's something I wanted to share with you today in relation to this reading. <clears throat> so, for today I actually do have a topic in mind. And I pulled six cards with the question, How can we keep the faith? And there's also a sub-question for this reading, and it is, how do we trust we're connected with our intuition? And the reason I ask it like that is because um, I did a self-reading for myself last night, and something really interesting came through that I don't think I've ever realized and I wanted to share it with you today because it just feels relevant but um, I got this weird analogy in the middle of the reading and um, the analogy was that the higher self for a lot of us including me is like that pair of sunglasses that you're wearing on top of your head and you're trying to leave the house and you're asking where are my sunglasses <laughs> and you're just looking underneath pillows and looking in places that you traced your steps back to and then suddenly you realize oh wait I'm wearing them on top of my head I've been wearing my sunglasses this whole time so it's, for some reason, this analogy was presented to me in terms of we are always connected to our higher selves, even when we're looking for it. It's always right there. So I wanted to ask the question today in these cards, how can we keep the faith? Like what can we do to reach the realization that we're in alignment all the time you know it's it's like there's steps we have to take now to understand that we are always connected to our highest self and our intuition I feel like as a collective we're this close to understanding that there's no separation between our minds and our higher self and whatever other selves we have, I don't know like how many there are, but <laughs> there is no separation. We create the separation because we're fighting. And what I mean by fighting, um, it kind of branches out into another topic in this reading. By fighting, I mean we're literally fighting our higher selves by focusing on something we believe is the answer to achieving this unity not only with our higher selves but also our higher purpose like I'm sure anyone who's watching this I'm sure you know what your life purpose is and this is something I've been struggling with this whole year and I wanted to share it with you guys because it helps me dissolve the barrier between me and the collective because I always feel like when I do these collective readings I'm on the sidelines quite a bit just kind of looking from afar and I want to join the collective in a sense I mean I'm already there, I'm already part of the collective but again there's this mental barrier 
that doesn't really exist. And I want to dissolve that now, and this is partially why I created this channel. So, aside from that, <laughs> where was I going? Oh yes, my fight. My fight this year has to do with my life purpose. And it is that I'm a musician. And I write music, I record music, I've performed quite a bit. And this is something I've chased after my entire life. Like, I learned how to sing when I was 11. And from that moment, I think it became implanted that that's my sole purpose. That's my soulmate journey, I think, is, is what's happening. And it's interesting that this is being revealed this way uh, as far as progress in pursuing the higher self and the higher purpose. So that's what's coming up in this reading today, is we are fighting too hard. So I pulled six cards, and the deck that I'm using is the After Tarot, and it's inspired by the Rider weight, except that each moment depicted in this deck is a moment after the images uh, depicted in the traditional deck. So for example, my favorite one I wanted to share was the Four of Swords, which uh, you can see the man in the Four of Swords has a visitor this time around. <laughs> and it's always been really ambiguous to me in both versions as to whether the man is alive or dead. Like, whether he's just sleeping or actually dead. And I think that's the point. But anyway, to get to the actual reading... Actually, one thing I wanted to tell you is my camera has this problem where it thinks I talk too much, so it shuts off at a certain point in time. And I could fix this, and I will fix this eventually, but I like that it kind of keeps me like on point for the most part. Like when it shuts off, I have to figure out where I left off, so it's kind of like a, a check for me. And another thing about my wonderful camera is that there is what looks like a sniper dot <laughs> on my face. I have no idea why why this dot is there, but let's make friends with the dot because if I don't make friends with the dot, it's going to drive me insane. So I'm just going to make friends with the dot. It's there. Hello dot. So moving on to the reading. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, the first card that I got is the tower. In this deck, the tower is a lot like death to me. Because unlike the Rider Waite tarot, where all you see is a tower falling and the people suspended in air, you see the reality of the downfall. And I think as a collective, since this is a collective reading, this is what we are fighting against. I think there is some sort of death that we need to set ourselves up for. And it's more on a mental level than anything. Like, I know for me, this death is letting go of everything I envisioned my music would be. Of letting go of all that ambition that I used to single-handedly strangle my dream. And that's because our higher self is truly what manifests everything in our life. So to fight against the vision of the higher self is what creates the disconnect. So when we feel disconnected from our intuition and our abilities 
to, you know, have deeper insights and even deeper meaning using the intuition, using our intuitive abilities, it means that it's time to resign and let our higher selves set us up for death. Not in a literal way, please, please no. <laughs> nobody, nobody take it that way. I just mean in a metaphorical sense. It's like going back to ground zero and trusting that we will always wake up from that. We're always going to wake up from that, that resignation. So aside from the tower, I got the Seven of Swords, and in this deck, he shows me denial. We are truthfully in denial about something. I mean, everybody is denying something in general, so that's kind of vague if I say it that way. But what I mean is, in relation to traversing toward our highest purpose and connecting with our highest self, we're in denial. And that denial um, involves a lot of uncertainty. So not only are we rejecting death, death modes, like modes of transforming through resignation, but we're also really unsure in general about what our power is. So I got the Page of Swords, and when I looked at him today, he just looked really <laughs> just sad and like, well, no, not at all sad, actually. Alright, camera turned off. <laughs> it's part two of this video. So I left off saying, we are wondering what would happen if we embraced our abilities and we're wondering why we even have them in the first place like what what would happen humor me here what would happen if we completely chose faith over any doubt whatsoever what would happen if we threw out the question, what's the worst that could happen? <laughs> what would happen if we went into that mode of even just for a little bit saying, I'm not going to wonder what the worst that could happen is. Because when we put ourselves into a thought pattern of deliberating over these things, we create the separation from our highest self. And when you get down to it, our highest self has created our story already. And I truly believe this. Like, it's hard for me to share my spiritual beliefs. But throughout this year, I'm coming to the realization that the highest self is what determines how we evolve. We've already chosen how we're going to evolve. It's kind of like, I was telling my friend this last night, this weird question came out of my, my head. It wasn't really a question, sorry. It was like a, another analogy, like the sunglasses one, but it was, it feels as though, um, before we're born, the highest self asks a question about what it's like to live on earth. And then our being born is reading the story so that we can find the answer. We already have determined what we're here to learn. It's just that in an ego state, we can't even possibly envision the biggest picture so as a collective right now, we might need to set ourselves up for death. It might be time to surrender and to wholeheartedly understand 
that this is part of the picture. There's so I feel so much safety in saying this because I'm experiencing it. I know a couple of others who just feel this need to surrender to the modes of death. It's not as scary as it sounds either. It's really the way to unite with the highest good and the biggest picture for how things are going to unfold. So, aside from that, I also got the Knight of Wands. And he amused me today because he just doesn't care. He doesn't care about norms. He doesn't care about what could go wrong. He's just burning like a torch in the night. He's just, you know, his, his full form of expression is go. So I think that's advice on how to deal with this conflict and confusion about how to get closer to our highest purpose. It's important to remember you either have faith or you don't. And that's the something that really stuck out about this particular reading. It's like, if you think about it, when you're in a place of faith, there is no doubt because you can feel strongly that no matter what happens, it's gonna be a part of the biggest picture. And when you're in doubt, you're trying to find your way back to faith. And there's nothing wrong with being in a place of doubt because it's not as though you can't recover from it, you know? You can always come back from that state of doubt. And I feel like the more we accept that we are fully hinged to our highest self, the less this part of ourselves that doubts will need to revisit the discovery of faith over and over again. So as a collective, I do believe we're almost there. We're almost there to realizing that our highest self is like the sunglasses we leave on top of our heads while we're searching for it. And it's just there all the time. Um, I think that concludes this reading. I want to thank everybody who watches. And I hope it's apparent that I'm dissolving the barrier between me and the collective. And my personality is coming out a lot more. And it feels great. So, that's about it. Uh, everybody, have a good one. I'm going to end this now.